The, it was the German Foreign Minister Heiko Maas um, who a few days ago, in a way that's significant, but it seems it doesn't go far enough. What's the sentiment in Namibia? I see, Tulani, what the German Foreign Minister did, or rather what the country did in the past week, gives rise to three things. The immediate one is what you noted yourself, that um, the... The, the, the package, the financial aid, which was your word, was rejected by both the Ovaherero the, and the Nama people, their leadership. So, guys, I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. Hello and welcome to another day in paradise and welcome to another edition of the Unapologetic Negrovian. In today's video, in the very early hours of yesterday morning, I posted a video and that video was about Germany's, Germany's disgusting actions in Namibia back in 1904. I also spoke about Germany's almost embarrassing offer of $1.3 billion over 30 years. I'm not even sure how they managed to keep a straight face when they made that offer. Now, alarmingly, I had a number of messages from at least three people who disagreed with me. And those people said that they were from those particular tribes. I'm gonna read out one of these such messages now. So one went, would be crazy UN, take that 1.3 billion and use it appropriately to fix Namibia for black people. There is more to be done from Germany. Okay, there is more to be done from Germany, but this is not how diplomacy works. So I'll give you one more message. Another message read, I am Nama and I say that you should stay at our business. This is our money and we'll do as we see fit. Now clearly these people don't understand their own worth and this is also quite embarrassing. It's a shame that we are now in a situation where we are having to tell people how much they are worth. It's also a shame that when you tell people that they are worth more than what they have been given, they begin to get Stockholm Syndrome and begin to believe that the money that has been offered is actually a fair amount. But I disagreed, many of you guys actually disagreed, and even the Namibian government agreed that this was not enough. And it seems as though even the Herero and the Nama people, the real representatives of those people, also saw this offer as a slap in the face as yesterday, literally hours after I brought out that video, both of those tribes rejected the offer from Germany. This to me was music to my ears. It was really good to hear that these people weren't the desperados that you had sending me those messages yesterday and they actually knew their own worth and the worth of those innocent civilians that perished by the hands of the invading German armies. So how much should these tribes actually be asking for? What are the terms and conditions they should be seeking? How are these tribes actually going through this process of negotiating with the German government about how much they should get. Are they even involved? Well, you're gonna be surprised with some of the information that I'm gonna give you today. So first, sit back, relax. I'd like to ask you to please like, subscribe, share, click the bell notification, and please consider supporting the channel on our Patreon. Link is in the description, and we're gonna try and get down to what exactly is going on. So I'm gonna read you a little extract out of the news agency, Al Jazeera that covered the story yesterday of the rejection of Germany's offer. In Hook, Namibia, the news left laid law Peringanda angry and disappointed. If the German government wants to reconcile, they need to give us our dignity back, said the 47-year-old. But that can't happen as long as they're excluding us. It seems as though the people who are actually doing the negotiations are people from the Namibian government. You may think, okay, well, that should be okay. I mean, it's the Namibian government, the representatives of the people. They are the elected representatives of the people. However, the reality is that they should have members of the leaders of both of these tribes, representatives of these tribes who should be leading 
these negotiations because I truly believe that if they were leading these negotiations, if they had more of an impact uh, and more insight into what the terms of the conditions of the reconciliation should be, we wouldn't have even have heard about this $1.3 billion. We wouldn't have heard anything about it. It's like they were trying to put out feelers for people. It seems as though the German government was doing just that, trying to see, well, let's see if we can get these the, these dumb Africans to uh, to say, yeah, maybe they'll say, yeah, you never know. That sort of a thing. That's what I feel like was going on. Reconciliation, Tulani, cannot be a one-way avenue. Um, Germany missed an opportunity to engage directly with the victims of the genocide, being the Ovaherero and the Nama peoples. Germany departed from an, agree an undertaking um, in 2006 that it would negotiate directly with the victims of the genocide, being the Ovaherero and the Nama people, and that the Namibian government would play the role of a mediator. That did not happen. What happened instead was the so-called agreement that is being entered into or entered into mm. between Namibia and Germany in terms of which monies is being paid to Namibia. It's called the development monies. It's unclear what all that means. Uh -huh. Importantly, the people themselves, the Ovaherero and the Nama people have not seen this document to Lani. So it's unclear what even its terms are. The German government approached the N Namibian government directly, right? And I think that they offered the Namibian government that amount of money, hoping that the Namibian government who are typical, um, look, I'm trying to be diplomatic here, but they are your quintessential African government. They are the types of people who will take the money and will do as they wish with it. And what are those two tribes going to do about it? Oh, it's okay, let's build a few tacky roads and a few little um, schools and uh, maybe, you know, a few offices, you know, you know, let, let, let's build a little bit of infrastructure for the people. But the majority of that money is going to go into little nest eggs for, for me and my little friends, the, the, the generals, the other people within the government that support me. The money can go there so they can send their children to school in Switzerland so that they can pay for their children's houses in in Paris. This is the way diplomacy works. The Nama and the Herero people are not having it. They are not going to have it. And it seems as though they are fighting back. And this is really good news. The Germans thought that the government was just going to accept this amount. I don't believe that the Germans actually thought that the government was going to accept this amount. I believe that they always knew that the government was going to reject it and to make another offer, a counter offer, so to speak. Okay, but what is this counter offer going to be? If the first amount was only $1.3 billion over 30 years, it was a really low amount on purpose. So that amount needs to be doubled, tripled, you know? That's what's going to happen. They're going to probably double it or triple it. And even if they double or triple that amount, it's still going to be nowhere near the amount that should be given to the people of Namibia. How much exactly should they be asking for? Well, I did a little calculating earlier. I'm not going to get the calculator out for you today. But I did a little calculating earlier. And if we are using the victims of the World War II genocide, the, um, the, the Holocaust, um, if you look at those numbers, the Namibian people should be asking for up front, up front, at least five times the amount that they were offered by the Germans. So they should be asking for minimum six billion minimum and that is up front not paid over a period of years but six billion up front 
and then they should be asking for an amount to be paid every single year for the foreseeable future. They should use the horrors of the Holocaust as their yardstick and they should be trying to get a similar amount of money to what they got. The reality is, is that the atrocities that happened in Namibia wasn't filmed. There were no photographs. There are no, there is no one that, that's living today that was part of it, that could describe it. It's not like Tulsa, Oklahoma, unfortunately. Everybody that experienced the horrors at the hands of the Germans have passed away now. And they've passed down these stories through the times of their great heroes. It's not like the Nano was just there and they just got shot. They fought back. These, the warriors fought back using rudimentary weapons. And I just think that these people, I, I sometimes I just wish that these people, that the hearts of these people, the warrior hearts were inside of us. It seems as though modern day society has washed all that out of us. So why did the Namibian government reject it? Well, it is likely that the Namibian government rejected this amount. It's likely that the Namibian government was going to accept this amount of money. But the advisors, who are more than likely German, by the way, told them to reject it. I think they, they told them to reject it on purpose, right? Because I believe that the German government knew that they were going to get a bit of a backlash over that amount. The whole point was for the German government to offer an amount which is to be rejected anyway and to get another amount offered to them, to get a counter offer. And I think that counter offer is gonna be either two or three times the amount, which is still not even half the amount. If it's three times the amount, it's not even half the amount that they should be getting up front. Really, the Namibian government need to play hardball and especially the people of the Nama and the Herero tribes, they definitely need to be getting involved and really focusing, using the power of the ancestors to negotiate a much better deal. The, this Miss Periganda, this chairperson for the Namibia Association, uh, actually went on to say, we are also worried that the social projects proposed by the German government won't actually benefit us. This is exactly what I said yesterday. That money, is going to be used to fund infrastructure projects which are going to be built by these massive corporations like MAN, Siemens, um, and the, all these other big German engineering and infrastructure uh, companies. They're gonna come in, they're gonna come in, they're gonna build these roads. That money is going to be spent on them and most of that money will be repatriated back to Germany. So what is the point? No, we need that money to stay in the community. It needs to be done by Namibian engineers. It needs to be done by at least African engineers alone. They can play the hardball and say, listen, we want to make sure that this money stays in the community. We want to build generational wealth for our clients. We want to build generational wealth not just for our children, but for our grandchildren, for our grandchildren's grandchildren. We want to make sure that this money is always kept within our communities. We do not want this money going to some French nuclear power builder, right? Nuclear power plant builder who are gonna build a power plant for electricity that we have, we, we, we don't use. We don't use that much electricity in our uh, villages. So, you know, why why do we need this? We don't need this. Reparations can also come in the form of giving that land back. Yes, most of those tribes that lost their land during that time still don't have it. They still have been unable to return to the fertile lands that their ancestors had once farmed. This is how they became prosperous in the first place. They didn't need anything else. They had their farming, they had their agriculture, they made their own food, they were self-sufficient. These people were your archetypical uh, African tribesmen who are really smart. They know everything about medicine, they know everything about 
um, agriculture. They didn't need anybody else, especially, I'm trying to be really careful here because <laughs> the last thing they needed was a bunch of Europeans coming into their country and taking over their land. They need to give that back. If the Germans want to look serious, they need to start giving that land back to the people. They should pay a fair price for the land that was taken from them. So guys, an online petition has been filed. So these two communities have filed a petition to make sure that the money does not go through the Namibian government and goes directly to the tribes, those two tribes that were affected. Okay, I'm gonna put that link in the description. Guys, please sign this petition. It's gonna take you literally 60 seconds to do. Please do so because if you are like me, if you believe that these people should get their reparations directly and not have to go through these corrupt officials who are going to skim that money and you know what they're like, you know what they're going to do guys if they get a hand off this money. So please sign the petition. The, the Namibian government won't listen to this, but the German government will listen to this, okay? If we shout out as loud as possible about it. So please sign the petition in the description box. The link is right down there. Please do so. Another one of the tribal chiefs, Wakamani Wakanan, also said in his Twitter, many models exist to administer reparation payments. If I was naive, I would believe that it is easier to facilitate development aid. But I am not naive. So I know that this is not an acknowledgement of wrongdoing and a subsequent willingness to pay penance. It's a performance. So you can see that you have a number of these tribesmen who are astute in the act of negotiations. They are not stupid. They knew that this was a kick in the teeth and thus they want to be properly remunerated. For me, this is really good news. I'm so happy to hear that. Oh, I don't know. I thought that the Namibian government were perhaps watching the unapologetic Negropian. So maybe they watched this and maybe they watched my video yesterday and thought, hey, do you know what? He's got a point there. That that dashingly handsome British Jamaican guy has a point. Let's 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 listen to what he has to say. So there you go. So I'm I'm hope I'm happy about that. And all jokes aside, these people do deserve justice. This money will go a little further into re reconciling what happened, but you can never reconcile lives with money. But you can always help your people with it. Just take a look at the victims of uh, the World War II. Our lives and the lives of those Africans were just as important, and it's important that we get a fair deal. It's important that these people get a fair deal. They should be extremely wealthy. They should be able to take care of their families. For generations, they have been oppressed by these people. I can't even, by these absolute degenerates from across the seas, okay? And now they have the chance to take back at least some of what was taken from them. Six billion. If you look at the amount of wealth, the amount of diamonds, the amount of um, natural resources that was taken from Namibia during the period of colonialism from the Germans, it was only 40 years, but yeah, that amount of wealth was far surpassed 1.3 billion. So they're not even asking for their money back at this moment. They are simply asking for their dignity to be given back to them. And that dignity can come in the form of a decent amount. Six billion dollars. Pay up Germany. Do any of you guys believe that they should be getting more perhaps? Do that, should they be asking for more money? Do any of you guys believe that these tribes should be getting a better deal than just money? Perhaps they should be getting even more infrastructure projects. Perhaps they should be um, getting more schools and those schools being built specifically for those people of those tribes. Should we have that money 
managed by a, a foreign entity, this would also be a very, very good deal. Why not? Let's give it to the Norwegians. Look what they did with their, with their money. The Norwegians are really good at taking money and making money. They will form generational wealth for the people of those tribes. They will never need to want for anything again. Generational wealth will be almost guaranteed if you give it to the people of Norway. Do you have any other comments? Please leave them in the comments section below. It'd be really good to hear your opinions on this one. So guys, that's all I've got time for for today. I'd like to thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I'd like to give an extra special thank you to my patrons and I will see you in the next one. Until the next time, please think twice. Tuarabit.